are going live. And if you're seeing this, then that's a good sign because that means that a lot of this is going out to you on Facebook Live and on YouTube. And the last one I need to check is Periscope. Periscope, Periscope. you're always Periscope. I heard myself and that's a good a good thing too. It's not always a good thing, but in this case it is. So, so all right. So we're going to go ahead and go live. And I hope everyone's been having a great week this week and that you're off to a good start. After you hear this, it's going to be even better because you're with Association Chat. Welcome to Association Chat. This is your weekly online discussion for the association community where we warm ourselves by the virtual fire with topics of the day, welcoming thought leaders and trailblazers alike to join up in this online home for the community. I'm the host of Association Chat, Kiki Latalian, and I want to give a couple of shout outs to our sponsor and a special promotion for listeners before we move on to the show. And first, as always, Big thanks to our wonderful sponsor, Fontiva, the AMS for Innovation. Thank you for your ongoing support of Association Chat and the community here. Check out Fontiva.com, guys, um, and it will tell you all you need to know about this great company and all they can offer. Check them out. And also, if you tuned in to the GDPR Association Chat with experts from the Trust Bridge, and they're answering all your questions, you'll be interested to hear that their experts are coming to DC February 26th through March 1st to conduct one-on-one -on -one consultations and workshops. And they're offering a 10% discount to Association Chat members. So if you're not a member already, and you should be, go to the private Facebook group today and you can either click on the call to action button here in Crowdcast or check out the link in the private Facebook group for more information. And all right. There you go. Are we ready for the show? Okay. So today's show is all about creativity and persistence. You know, a lot of you are probably listening to this and you have already experienced uh, making resolutions for the year. And maybe part of those resolutions had to do something with being more creative or doing something on a consistent basis. And for many of you, whether it's something that's creative or not, you've probably either given up, maybe for a moment, maybe for a lifetime. Jonathan Mann is our guest today. He's an American singer, songwriter, best known for creating and publishing a new song and video each day since January 2009 under the YouTube channel named Song A Day. And we're going to talk to him about something, a little something to do with creativity and persistence. He might know a little something about that. So welcome, Jonathan. Hello. Hello. Hi. I'm so glad you're here. Yeah, me too. Yes. So where to begin? I don't know. All right. So Anywhere. when I first, when I saw Jonathan, I've seen him uh, perform his art, perform, perform his music, two different conferences, just blew people away. It was just amazing. And so um, I actually left the keynote of the last conference I saw him at and I like tackled him and I said, wait, 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 wait. I want to talk to you. I have a million questions for you. And that's why um, he's here today. He graciously accepted. So Jonathan, what if, let's just start out with this. All right. Yeah. You've written one song a day. You've produced a, a video a day and you know, eventually I would think that your songs have transitioned, that they've changed over time. And so I was curious. One of the first things that I got curious about was like, all right, so yeah, uh, how have they changed over time? How have those themes sort of, I don't know, adapted, evolved? Yeah. So that's an interesting question. Um, you know, if you're talking about doing something every day, like I have for, um, I'm in my 10th year now. So, mm -hmm. so on January, on the, you know, next January 1st, it'll be 10 years, which is a big one. Um, a lot of the, you know, one of the biggest things that I've noticed, uh, and I didn't really notice it until maybe about four years in and I, four or five years in, I don't know what that means, but 
I started to notice, um, you know, one, one vector that you can talk about how things have changed for me is, it's just, you know, you just get better at something, right? You pra mm -hmm. practice something every day. Um, and I'm writing these songs and I'm recording them. I'm often making videos for them. And so it was interesting to me when I started to realize what I've gotten better at over time. Um, so like, the thing that's gotten the better, better the most uh, um, over the over these uh, nine years is is my voice. Actually, um, I think there's something about the act of singing every single day. Um, I had taken voice lessons, a few here or there, some in college, some just mm -hmm. with private people, and none of it really stuck or took. Um, but I can listen back to old recordings of myself and hear the progression um, that just training my voice every day and just singing, just the act of not, not practicing, not doing scales, not doing anything like that, just the act of singing every day. Um, and I actually remember the moment very clearly. I was actually performing at a conference, um, XOXO in Portland, really wonderful small tech conference. And I remember looking back at the video of that um, and noticing that my voice, I actually liked the way my voice sound sounded, mm. which is, which believe it or not, I mean, after all these years of doing it, that was, that was 2013. So that was, you know, five years in up until that point, I, I confess that I, I didn't really like the way my voice sounded, which seems strange, um, because I was doing it all the time and still <laughs> recording myself, but I listened back to that. And I was like, well, actually, like I'm, I'm actually hitting those notes and I don't, and it sounds just different. And, yeah. you know, so if there's a chart of like the way that my voice has gotten better over time, it's, you know, this sort of exponential thing where I'm finding I can do things with my voice. Like I said, just from doing it every day that, that, um, that I couldn't do before. Mm -hmm. um, and it's interesting con to contrast that this is already getting really wonky, but no, I love it. I love it. It's interesting it. to contrast <laughs> it with something like my musicianship, playing, mm -hmm. you know, guitar and piano and, um, you know, all the different instruments that I play, which hasn't, which has gotten better maybe, but it hasn't gotten better in the same kind of way. Huh. And it's really the, the answer, the reason to that is really obvious, actually, which is with my voice, it's the one thing that... Um, Every time I use it, I'm doing something different. I'm working out these muscles, like literal muscles, right? Um, oftentimes when I'm recording, I use a lot of shortcuts when I'm make, you know, when I'm using oh, right, right. When I'm playing an instrument or something. I'm yeah. using a lot of shortcuts. I'm using the software to like if I if I have if I'm off something rhythmically, rather than do like 10 takes to try to get the rhythm just right. I'll do one take and I'll move the rhythm ever so slightly in post. I'll fix it in post. Um, and so in that way, my musicianship, um, <clears throat> while I would say it has improved somewhat, it hasn't improved as much as my voice. So it's, it's so really, that's, yeah, it's beautiful. It's like a testament though. And this is something that I'm just in love with this idea of, strengthening whatever muscle, the effort muscle, the whatever muscle, um, by doing something different. And that's, you do that with your brain. Of course you do that with your voice. And yeah. so, you know, I, um, I'm just fascinated by this idea. It, you know, the song a day thing is really, obviously really cool. And everybody like follows that. But when you think about the, the trouble that we have in just doing anything every day, yeah. I mean, I can't, I, I hate to say it, but like there are nights I go to bed and I haven't washed my face, you know, yeah, it's like, of course. <laughs> it's yeah. like, so, so like, talk to me about surely you have run into resistance along the way. Hey, Aaron, thanks for saying hi. Surely you've, you've run into resistance along the way and somehow you have overcome that. Can you talk to me a little bit about what that looked like in the early days versus what that looks like today? Sure. Yeah. And that's, you know, that's something I hear a lot. And I'm the same way. Like I confess there are definitely like, there's, there's very few things I feel like anybody does e absolutely every day. Yeah. You know? And it's been like, whatever, I'm on like 3,233 
days. But who's counting? Of not having. <laughs> I looked earlier so that I could, <laughs> yeah. so that I could make sure I had the right number. Um. So, uh, yeah. So, um, there's like two ways that I that I could answer this. You know, it's like I'll give you. There's like a spiel way, right, where I have a whole spiel. Um, and then there's there's like another kind of deeper way that we could go if we want to want to. Let's, but, no, let's go deep. <laughs> let's go deep. <laughs> you know, the, the spiel way starts and, and the spiel way is also true, which is, um, you know, in the beginning of doing any creative act is um, this dance that you have to do, um, this bargaining with that you have to do with fear. Um, mm -hmm. and it's fear of not being good enough and it's fear of being judged for producing something that's bad. It's fear of, of failure, of, of feeling like a failure for not, you know, um, and one of the things early on that I really stressed with song a day is this idea that it's okay to be bad. Like it's okay to produce bad things. Um, first of all, you don't have to share. I, I happen to share everything with everybody because that's sort of my personality. But like, if you do something every day and some of it is bad, that's totally fine. You know, mm -hmm. I had this like um, this uh, idea called 70, 20, 10, which is 70% of everything you make is, is mediocre. 20% is bad. Mm -hmm. Like just, just know that up front that 20% of everything you do, 20% of every single ass and chat uh, episodes are going to be bad. And Don't then tell them that. <laughs> and then, and then 20 and then 10% is going to be amazing. Yeah. So yeah. the calculus is if you do a song a day, you're just going to have more songs that fall into that 10% bucket. Um, and as time has gone on, I've realized that that changes a bit and that, you know, um, I think the more you do something, the you can, you can end up putting more songs, more things into that 10% bucket. Maybe those ratios change. The yeah. more you practice something, the 10,000 hours thing, maybe something, something along those lines. But in general, it's about like realizing that it's okay to fail and there's no, there's no real punishment for failure of anything creative other than the way that you feel when you made something bad, which is bad. You feel bad. But like if you make something tomorrow, then you can just sort of let go of that bad feeling and try again. Um, so that's like the that's the basic idea behind doing something every day and the sort of freedom that it affords you. Um, and the reason why you would want to do something like that, mm -hmm. um, you know, the, the sort of deeper thing is that surely and, and, and definitely there've been many times when I've thought about stopping, when it becomes, it's sort of like life. It's just like you go through periods in your life where you're up and you go through periods in your life when you're down. And mm -hmm. song a day is like a reflection of that. There are, there are periods, sometimes long periods where I hate it, where yeah. I'm, my relationship to the project is, is very antagonistic. And it's like, I, I'm not feeling it. And, um, and I, and the songs I think reflect that. And, mm -hmm. you know, my audience gets worried about me and, um, you know, and then I always find invariably that I sort of come out of that eventually and it becomes interesting again due to whatever. Yeah. And so um, that's another whole side of it, you know, which I think, that's which I think is maybe not as pertinent because maybe it's just like, it, it's something that's pretty unique to me at this point or unique to anyone that does something every single day, but maybe, maybe people feel that way in their own lives with their own jobs. Like I feel so. anything that you do, you sort of fall out of love with eventually. And then you can find your way back into love with it. Well, see, I find that too. I think when you have a, a way to sort of 
track uh, sort of milestones over time. You know, it's like with the association chat, it started out as a weekly tweet chat back in 2009. And um, each week, you know, whenever that chat happens, two o'clock Tuesday, yeah. two o'clock Tuesday, it's like over time, there were times when I was really hyped up and I'm a go getter and let's go, you know, we're going to have these deep conversations that transitioned into this interview series. And um, then there are times where it feels like, I mean, between health issues, personal stuff, feeling not inspired. Do you, there was a, there was the, like the only earthquake I've ever felt in my life that was just minor, but it hit here while I was having an association chat. And I came back to the chat, but it's like, but it's like, uh, you still show up if it, you always show up. And I can't even imagine like what that's like day by day, but I can, I definitely can relate to what you're saying about periods of time where you just feel like I'm not into it and people do feel it. Yeah. They, they notice. do sense it. They notice oh, for that. sure. I'll hear from people I've never met in person and they'll yeah. say something like, are you okay? You've been quiet online lately, you know? And yeah. I'm like. Yeah, I'm, I am going, and it's hard to come back and say anything when you don't know them, but like, it's like, yeah, you're picking up on something that's real. Adrian over here says another Vermonter here, Jonathan have loved your quirky heartfelt light songs for ages. Your persistence reminds me of Seth Godin's who's been publishing a short blog post every single day for years. And every now and then a gem appears mm -hmm. have to mention. There's also a 70, 20, 10 rule about how adults learn these days, 70% mm. on the job. 20% your peers and only 10% in the classroom. That's like me for sure. I learn nothing in a classroom at all. And, uh, Joan says, she asks a question here. Um, sorry to be a bit late. When you say do something bad, do you mean like with this program, do it in public? You said uh, you share it all. What about for those of us who are very public, like as a trainer and do it badly in front of a group? What's your mm -hmm. improv? What's your improv trick for covering? I love that question. Yeah. You know, here you're out in front of people all the time. Yeah. You're putting stuff out there. You're sharing the good, bad, and ugly. Any improv tricks to share? I think the only the only advice that I can give in that instance is sort of what I was saying before. Is just like the more the more you do it, the less that'll hurt. And so the the more opportunities you have to get up in front of those people and do your thing you know i certainly fa find this when i'm playing when i'm playing shows too it's like a, a show can go really badly and that there's kind of nothing like that's maybe the worst feeling it's yeah. like giving a bad talk or like just f screwing that up yeah like she's saying to, to be in front of an audience it's one thing for me to do to screw up online where i make my song i upload it and yeah. maybe it shows up in the comments or something but i don't have to like, be in front of people like screwing up in front of people is a whole. Can we talk different... about that? Sure, Let's talk yeah. about that some more. Yeah. So like, it's actually refreshing to hear someone like yourself where I've only seen you knock it out of the park. That's it. <laughs> oh, um, man. Oh, no. But sure. can we talk like, does that, does that happen to you? Has oh, that... <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. I, I, um, <laughs> I'll give you a really concrete example. I, I gave. I forget, I forget their uh, acronym, too many acronyms, you know? Yeah. But, yeah. But, um, <laughs> one of the first gigs that I booked, I'm like, have this, uh, speaking agency. Right. And one of the first gigs that I booked through them, um, was like a physical therapy, uh, association or it wasn't even an association. It was like a company mm -hmm. in, uh, in Connecticut. <clears throat> and it just went, it went horribly. Like I, because it was the first one that I was doing through this agency, I thought that I needed to, and this is a, the, the, the moral, I'll give you the moral front. The moral is basically <laughs> like, I think the thing is if you can identify what you, what went wrong, if you can mm -hmm. identify what you effed up um, and what, where the wires got crossed um, then, and then, and then, like I was saying, if you have more opportunities to be in front of people, you know, my mom is trying to be a, it wants to be a storyteller, like the moth and like, uh, Oh, you know, like, nice. And so my advice to her was just like as many opportunities that you can get to be in front of people and tell your stories, you know, because then just like the songs, each opportunity becomes less precious. You don't have to not, you don't have to feel like, Oh, I messed that up. It's the only gig that I'm going to have this year. 
and yeah. now I messed it up. So at this yeah. gig, I because it was the first one that I booked through this comp through this agency. I don't know. I thought that I needed to like, and this is something that maybe you know about better than I do. But I, you know, this line between how much do I tailor what I do to the association? How much do I tailor my whole shtick? Yeah. To the to the thing. If I'm giving a talk, do I make the talk? about me do, and do I, how do I, you know, my like, well, this is how songwriting relates to physical therapy. Right. And so, and so that was a mistake I made. I was like really desperate to like relate very directly song a day and creativity to these physical therapists. And it was like, it was just horrible. It was just like really bad. And, um, and so I, what I learned from that is that basically the way I approach it now is I sort of tell my story and I, I focus on sort of the things that I've learned in a broad sense and I don't try to tailor it. I don't try to like make it super specific like that. That's what I learned. But, it, but that was like a terrible experience. Like it um, was, it was so awkward and just felt so wrong, you know? <laughs> oh, I hate that. It's like, oh, it's the worst. I mean, you do, you learn, hopefully you learn from it every single time. But I mean, I'm ter like, I hate, I hate that, especially when you are right in the middle of it and you know, it's not going yeah. the way you want it to. Yeah. And you've just got to kind of go through it, wrap it up. And I, I mean, those times when you're leaving the stage and you're just like, Oh God. <laughs> I think the fact is, you know, the fact is like every performer, every single performer, whether you're a trainer in a room uh, with, with people or a comedian or a musician or a speaker or a CEO in front of their company or like whoever, like every single performer has had that, you yeah. know, it's just, it's, it's inevitable that that's, that some of those are going to happen, I guess. And I guess you just have to, yeah, it, there's nothing worse than that feeling, though. No, really it's a is. it's a horrible feeling. So on this on the topic, continuing on the topic of um, and by the way, over here on Facebook Live, people are like, "You just helped me so much!" Oh, All good. caps, exclamation, exclamation, exclamation. Oh, good. Uh, <laughs> and then someone was laughing. Um, they were saying their world records for fixation or obsession. <laughs> so um, only, only, yeah. Uh, yeah. Only for me, as far as I know, I'm not entirely sure what, if, <laughs> if there are other ones. Yeah. You know, I, I have to say that, um, you know, I think that this, this is such an interesting, you are such an interesting person to talk to about this subject because persistence and creativity, all of us have felt like we've lacked one or the other and you, most of the time both. And so you, as sort of being able to plow through that and saying, okay, I don't feel like it, but I'm still showing up. I'm still doing this. There's definitely more to learn. So whenever you're trying to sort of work your way into getting in a more inspired state, do you have any go-tos? I mean, is there like, you always go to the well and you use these themes and it pulls up something for you. Um, what works? So I answer that in a few ways. Like, okay. like you know, my go-to thing about inspiration is that you know um it's 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 not a useful construct for mm -hmm. for if you want to be creative on demand or whatever if you want to be creative in the moment when you have to be then inspiration is not where to look because it's inspiration is is the thing that it's impossible to chase inspiration is the thing that you can sit around waiting your whole life for, and you won't actually get anything done or make anything. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the, like the, the broad way that I approach it is, um, every day when I have to sit down to write a song, no matter what is going on in my life, often these days I have two kids under the age of four and, um, it's not often it's it's often at the very very end of the day when i am bone tired and exhausted that i'm sitting down to do my song in the first place so um it's like literally i just sit down sometimes i literally just sit down and just start writing words mm -hmm. on the page 
not caring at all what they mean, what they say. Um, you know, my philosophy with that is like making something is always better than not making something because I, I love that. If you make something, anything, yeah, you know, if you start your, I don't here, here I am. I'm going to try to like relate it, but like if you, if you start your PowerPoint or whatever it is, you just make it, make something, then you have something tangible to improve, to like fix. Mm -hmm. And editing is often easier than just creating for, for most people, actually editing is kind of the hard part for me, but like, um, so that, so that's, that's my philosophy It's like, I literally just sit down on those days and I am writing nonsense words. And, um, I will say that on, on many occasions, I find that it is those days that I, uh, am surprised and sort of delighted by this thing that came out of left field that I did not expect when I just yeah. sit my, sit myself down and force myself to make something, um, you know, it's great to feel inspired and it's awesome to sit down and create when you are feeling that inspiration, but it's so rare yeah. chasing that, <laughs> chasing that music. It's not a normal feeling that most people get on a daily mm -hmm. basis. Um, you know, for me to get really specific, <clears throat> I realized at some point that there are three broad themes, categories that my songs sort of fall into. Mm -hmm. And once I sort of realized that was helpful in a way to sort of when I'm sitting down to realize which bucket am I sitting in. So, you know, those days when I'm just sitting down and writing words, there's this whole bucket of songs that I make that are sort of I, I call poetic. They're they're, um, you know, of the like Bob Dylan or like Leonard Cohen variety where they're kind of opaque and they're this poetic language and what they mean can be debated. Right. And mm -hmm. so that's like one category of song. Um, another one is personal. So anything and everything that's happening in my life, like one of the songs that um, went really viral that I had was this song that I made with an ex where we were breaking up and we wanted to like announce to all of our, all of our friends in one <laughs> fell swoop that we were breaking up. And yeah. so rather than do like a Facebook post or something, we like made a song about how we needed to break up, et cetera. Um, and a lot of songs come out of that space. So when I sit down, I can ask myself, like, am I, is there something going on with me right now that I want to put into song form? And then the third bucket is like, I call topical, which is like anything outside of myself in the world, online, politics, technology, video games, um associations anything in that zone so it just helps it helps to like frame for myself you know where am i in space which of those buckets am i sitting in and and that just helps guide me you know down a given path i love that because i think that um you know i think that it helps to actually have some tangible this is the way that you sort of can approach it and have these different buckets from which to approach your your work that you do so that something gets done some of these themes uh help you to get things produced and i i totally agree with the idea that it, it's almost this discipline of showing up just showing up and and that is the hardest part it's the hardest part yeah whether it's exercise or anything i feel like it's just like if you just show up, you win, you're much further than you would be if you, you know, hit snooze or just went ahead and didn't do it, what have you. And I, th I think that, you know, making space to let new ideas come in, just allowing yourself, you know, uh, Adrian was saying over here that the best creative times for me are when I'm doing semi-automatic stuff, taking a shower, mm -hmm. driving oh, somewhere daydreaming. And I was just thinking today, I, I'm like, um, I have this like journal thing that I'm working through and each day they have a different challenge. And the challenge today was to take 10 minutes and take your tea or your coffee 
and just savor it, which is bizarre because I realized that I never do that. Like yeah, I, yeah. I never just do that. I'm always yeah. like, it's like coffee, talking to you, writing stuff down, you know, yeah. it's like all this other stuff. And when I did that, I had like five different things that I thought, oh, this is going to make this better yeah. in 10 minutes, yep. in 10 minutes. So it's kind of, it's kind of crazy the way that that works. Um, one of the things I wanted to talk to you about was on the subject of creativity and, um, you know, sort of trying new things. Of course, you've got, you've got showing up every day. You, you've got being pers uh, persistent, consistent, tenacious about what you're doing. But um, do you ever collaborate? Do you ever do like creative collaborations with others? You know, I know that in like the event space, um, there are different song creatives who who work with events. So mm -hmm. so if you have, then would you mind sharing with me some of those ways that you've you've maybe collaborated? Yeah, definitely. So okay. collaborating in song and day space has similar, you know, has also sort of gone through these sort of periods of, of, of ups and downs where I'm doing a lot. And then sometimes I'm pulling back and not doing as many. Um, and I will say that since my kids have been born, you know, since my kids have been born, like so much, they were born, my son was born like five years in to song a day. So, so much changed about how song a day operated after <laughs> he was born. And yeah. now my second. Um, and one of those is that I'm not able to collaborate nearly as much, um, you know, collaborating, uh, on a daily project, it can be really tricky because you're, there's so many moving parts. Um, I did, uh, in January, I think of 2014, I think that's when it was, I did 31 days of collaboration. So wow. I put out the call to my audience I made a spreadsheet. It was first come, first serve. Everyone chose a day. I missed it. <laughs> and every day we did, it was, it was just, it was crazy. It was just like different configurations. Like they would make a track and I would put a song to it. Like they gave me lyrics and they would sing it. Like somebody played drums and like just, it was just all kinds of different configurations. It was amazing. And then um, on, it was such a logistical nightmare, but then on, January 31st, I organized sort of all throughout the month, I organized a f like everybody who had collaborated and then open to the public, anyone that wanted to, we did like a 52 person collaboration where <clears throat> people were oh playing gosh. all the instruments, people were doing all the singing. Um, it was crazy. It was like an insane amount of work. Um, yeah. Yeah. No. Cheers to so, you on that. I'll, I drink, I want more coffee. <laughs> so that was, um, that was a lot of fun. And, and there's something of course about collaboration that is so great. You get things. Um, I'm, I'm endlessly, you know, in love and fascinated with other people's abilities. You know, it's like, you're always, I'm always, so in love with what other people can do, especially things that that I do, that don't come easily to me. So these different styles of music that people would bring in that month and these different kinds of um, skills sort of augmenting what I do and us becoming something bigger and more interesting. Um, I, that's, that's what I love about, about collaboration. It just makes everything not necessarily better, but at least more interesting for you for me. Yeah. Um, yeah. and then, yeah, like you were saying, you know, I, I haven't done any kind of collaboration with any of the other, um, music based, uh, speaker performer folks. Um, I hadn't heard of the ones that you sent me. I forget exactly who they were. Um, but there's like, I feel like there's a, you know, we, at last XTP, there was Saul Paul, of course. Right. And there's, there's like a whole host of different people doing, you know, various things with, with improv and music and um, songs and things like that. Um, the, I think the two times that I've seen you now, it's been mostly the video stuff that I've do, been doing, which is like a, di which is sort of a different kind of collaboration, right? Where yeah. um, I get the people 
at the conference to sort of collaborate with me in the making of a video about the conference. So when you're doing that, when you're doing those, I mean, that's kind of, that's a job. You're getting paid to do that. Does that count towards your song a day or do you still have to create a song a day? Depends. Um, oftentimes I'm using, oftentimes if I can, I'm using that song as my song a day. Yeah, That's my goal. I, was, I would like to. Yeah. Yeah. Because I would be like, oh God, doesn't this count? Doesn't this count? <laughs> Especially because you're under the gun. You have to create yeah. this stuff really fast, you know? Really fast. Yeah. Um, um, I do. Yeah. It depends. It depends on what they want, right? If they don't want it out yet, then I, then I have to do it. Then I have to do another song, but very often I'm like, can I post this? And it works. So. So, okay. So, and that's another fascinating thing for me. And I'm going to kind of like jump into where, where, where I've seen you do your, your thing, where I've seen you like, um, kind of you're in your recording in different areas, you're capturing, you're interviewing, you're setting things up. And by the end of the conference, um, every, you know, you've got all of these moments and somehow this thing has been created while everybody else was doing other stuff. And it's just kind of cool because you, you pull it all together, but I'm actually interested in how you go about, I saw you running around before the last conference we were at together, way before the opening keynote, way before all of that. And so you were already scoping the joint before they, anybody knew who you were. And um, so what are you looking for? What are some of the things that you're just like, okay, I know I've got to get this person. I've got to get that situation, whatever. How, how do you go about this? Yeah. So the, the it's funny because the video stuff is actually relatively new. It's like a new thing that I've added to my, to my repertoire as mm -hmm. it were. Um, you know, I started out um, with conferences at TED med, the, the medical version of the TED conferences yeah. uh, doing and and this is what I did, like from 2011 to 2013 exclusively is like recap songs. So like, um, like the video, but without the video, where I'll watch the talks and then at the end of the day get up and sing a song that it's sort of like sketch notes, but you know with song. So like I'll just recap everything that happened throughout the day in like a four minute song or whatever. Um, so that's sort of where I started. And then doing speaking and adding in things where, especially if there's like a multi-track kind of conference where I'll do, I'll come with half a song and perform half the song at the beginning of the conference. And then I'll solicit ideas from everybody in the room. They just yell out, you know, like yeah. whatever bed bugs. And then like, I, <laughs> I incorporate all that into a finished song at the end. Um, have you ever, have you ever done anything for pest world? That just reminded me of them. They would be perfect for that. They perfect. would, you know, yeah. I, pest world I've been in touch with it, That was from a, <laughs> unfortunately that was from a home care association oh. <laughs> bed bugs. Anyway, <laughs> um, it was just a whole other thing. Yeah. But, uh, so, so that's sort of where, that's where I sort of came out of. And I still do a lot of that stuff. Um, but the video stuff actually started at XDP last year at, at the experience design um, thing from ASAE. And, um, it was actually, I don't know, this is probably too inside baseball and I probably shouldn't even talk about it, but it was because <laughs> they booked Saul Paul as the sort of music on the stage performer guy. And I really wanted to be there and do something. So I was talking with them and I just on a whim, I just like, I pitched them. I said, okay, here's what I can do. I can make a video uh, that by the next morning you can have like a fully produced song and a video that you can show. And that sort of convinced them to let me <laughs> come and do it. So that was like literally the first time it wasn't the first time that I had ever done that. I had done that in various configurations for other things, but in terms of a conference, you know, I was getting paid to do it. It was the yeah. first time. So I had no idea. I figured that, I mean, cause when I saw you for the time it was at that that xdp it was before yeah. tech and all this other stuff so it's just like oh yeah he's got this this is his thing he does this all the time yeah but it so, was amazing so so you know one thing is like very back way back to the beginning of our conversation the other thing that i've gotten really good at you know the other muscle and in addition to my voice the muscle that i've worked out that is that has been um that I've gotten so much better at and so good at is, is working very quickly. Right. And, and 
making a song and a video because every day I post to YouTube, I make a video too. So I have these skills to make something very quickly. Um, so to answer your question, it's sort of, it's really just a gut. It's like a gut thing. And, and I'm, I'm sort of in a desperate state, you know, I'm in, <laughs> I'm in a desperate state of like, I know that I'm under the gun. And so what I'm looking for is, like the pieces that I know will fit into the puzzle. And it's, yeah. it's, I don't know exactly how to explain how I know it when I see it, but I'm just, that's what, you know, when you saw me that day and I was like wandering around, I was just trying to get a lay of the land. It's like, okay, I need to be over here. I need to be over there. And you know, at that conference, I realized like, okay, well, all of these rooms that everyone's going to be in, they all look the same and they're not particularly, they don't look good. So that was like what I learned from like walking around. So then I had it in my head. I'm going to have to have a lot of other shots to cut to that are interesting rather than just see it. You know, XDP, yeah. of course, has its, it's own. Creative it's and, so yeah. beautiful just to look at. You know, you could shoot yeah. it from any angle and it's going to be interesting and there's things moving and lights and everything. Um, so, um, yeah. And and um, so it's a it's a relatively new kind of idea, and at XTP we're going to be doing something you know similar but a little bit different this year. Um, but I really enjoy it. It's real. It's I I um, I like doing all configurations of it. You know, being in front of people and singing and speaking. Um, <clears throat> I also really love doing the video stuff. It's a whole other kind of challenge, and I I do find it. It's it's nice how challenging it is. There's this idea that you get into a state of flow mm -hmm. when your skills are just below, you know, whatever the task is, you're like barely coming up against the ability to complete the task. Yeah. Um, and I feel like oftentimes that's where I am with these video things where um, it's very much in the pocket of like, it's challenging. It's like a really good feeling of challenging for me. And I really enjoy it. That's so awesome. I've got a couple of questions from uh, some people who are participating right now. And uh, one of them is, do you come up with song fragments, build up a bank of them over time and go over them when you're looking for the next song or, or do you actually write each song in one day? It's funny. I, I generally don't do that. I know of so many artists and musicians who keep a notebook where they write down lines and song ideas, um, you know, or they'll record song fragments on their phone or whatever. Um, and I, I generally, you know, occasionally there'll be something like that or there'll be some kind of idea that I'll have one day and I won't have time to expand to do it on that given day. So it'll sort of get, you know, but, but in general, it's, it's much more like in the moment, mm -hmm. it's much more just day to day, me trying to find whatever the thing is that I'm going to write about. So the, here's another question. I'm so, this is, this is fantastic. I have so many questions for you. See, the thing is, is this happened because I already had a ton of questions for you and now I'm getting more. So so uh, the second question we have here is, do you collaborate with songs and graphic facilitators? It would seem an amazing way to do this, sort of like using World Cafe, but bigger. Mm -hmm. So are they talking about like, uh, like the sketch notes people? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I haven't done that. I've thought about it. I met a guy at a conference in September who does sketch notes a lot. And we talked about it a little bit, but I haven't. It does seem like it would be a sort of a perfect fit in some ways. Yeah. So here's my question. Um, I want to find out a little bit more about, um, you know, I, as you have gotten better about showing up and being consistent and um, having that discipline to do this one thing, have you found that that helps you also be disciplined in other areas? Like, for example, have you decided, okay, so I've got this song a day thing pretty mastered. So now I, pro I want to learn how to play, you know, the harmonica. And so I'm going to do that every day. Like, ha have you found that it helps or in what, in what ways? No. <laughs> the answer is, the answer is no. <laughs> Very interesting, actually, that, 
you know, the the only other thing that I really do almost every day is run. I like I I've trained myself to have to run in the same in sort of the same way that I write a song every day. Um, pretty much unless I'm sick, I'm going to be out running. All right. Have you suffered from? Did you grow up and you had like a thing that you just consistently had to do or? No, no, it's, and it doesn't come from like an OCD kind of place. It's funny. A lot of people assume that there's like an obsessive quality to it, but I'm not an obsessive person, which is, I know it sounds crazy, but, um, but yeah, you know, and I don't know why that is. I think in some ways you, you know, one only has, I think so much, um, and I think this is sort of a thing that they've proven, although maybe I saw a thing that where they disproved it, but like the idea that you only have so much willpower yes, and yes. you can deplete your willpower and once it's gone, it's gone and you have to give it time to build back up. Mm-hmm. And I think anyway, that whether or not that is true science wise, it f- certainly feels true. And I wonder if something like that is at play with song a day where you know, I, maybe I only have enough room, uh, to do that. I know, you know, one thing that's interesting actually is I do know of a fair number of people online, you know, I come across other thing a day people quite frequently. There's a whole host of people who will, um, do a thing a day each year and they'll change it. Um, I remember coming across a guy who, who wanted to learn like all the Adobe, products they wanted to learn illustrator and they want to learn photoshop and they want to learn after effects and so just year by year they would just do a photoshop thing a day an after effects thing a day what a great way to just in four years you know become completely the expert in, yeah. in, in that whole thing um you know maybe one year you do a drawing a day and the next year you do a poem a day and the next year you do uh, a pho- photograph a day. Um, I think that's a great way to, I sort of locked myself into the song a day thing, but like for other people, what a great way to, um, to do that. And of course there's so many other uh, wonderful um, sort of force yourself to be creative projects out there. There's, there's NaNoWriMo, um, mm-hmm. which is you write a, write a novel uh, in the month of November there's a great thing that happens in February where what we're in now um, to make an album, make a whole album of music in February. Um, Song a day started with this thing called uh, fun a day, which still happens, which is just to challenge you to make, to make one thing every day in January. Um, oh, I didn't uh, know that. How cool. And that's how song a so day started cool. in January of 20, uh, 2009. My friend gave me a flyer for fun a day, make a song a day in January. So I did that and then I just kept going. I just didn't stop. And that's wow. literally how, how, how it happened. What's one of the most surprising things that you've discovered in the process of making, uh, making a song a day? Hmm. Um, well, I think really it's just sort of more of an overall thing, which is, you know, I, it's sort of just taken me all that down all these paths that I'm just, that I did would never have expected to go down. Mm -hmm. Um, And, you know, I think maybe it's just more of like a, just the way maybe a lot of people are just surprised by their lives. Mm -hmm. And so song a day is so intertwined in my life that it just sort of, the way that it feels is that it's just, the things that song a day has brought into my life in general, it's just surprising all of it, you know, yeah. the, the opportunities that I've gotten, you know, the, the way that I make my living now is surprising. Um, <laughs> I mean, really it's yeah. just, it's, it's, it's wacky. Um, and uh, it's all from song. A day. I mean, like you, it's very clear to me that like, if I hadn't done that so much, my whole thing would be different. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and so. It's, a, it's such a fascinating thing. And I feel like it, it's probably it has to make you feel 
good. You've seen how this thing that you've worked on, how it has transformed your life. It's really sort of molded it into what it is today. And it is something where you seem to, because it's sort of permeated, it's become part of you or you. It seems like, um, you know, it's, it is finding its way into all these different sort of creative variations as it, as it goes out. I don't know what this is. Those people who are listening to this as audio, I'm kind of doing a little dance while I'm talking. It's amazing. Um, But, you know, what do you think as far as, as you've gone along, obviously, you know, you are a musician, you have these musical abilities, but what are maybe some of the skills or strengths that you have that you've pulled from um, the most in order to do what you do today? Um, I don't know if there's skills exactly, you know, I think that, I think that there's something, um, that, that is like innate that I, that I think is more innate to me somehow. I don't know if it's something that I, um, you know, just, I've always, I started making, I started writing songs when I was 12 and I knew like then that that's what I wanted to do. Like I knew that somehow I wanted to just make songs all the time. And I think that that there's a sort of like stubbornness that I have and like a, um, you know, my wife, she follows like the Gretchen Rubin matrix of like, uh, which category do you fall into an yeah. obliger or a rebel or whatever. And like, <laughs> I'm a very clear rebel. Like, I, like my, my satisfaction, a lot of it comes from me needing to like convince myself, like I'm Mm -hmm. not going to be convinced by many other outside sources. So I think like the ultimately the the thing that uh, that has pushed me to to be the way that I am and do the thing that I do is that is like this kind of like um, internal restlessness of wanting to just make another song all the time. Yeah. Basically. I, I I was just thinking about you have the two little ones and how hard it would be for any of them to like, to come to you one day and say like, I just don't wanna, yeah. you know? <laughs> <laughs> like, oh dude, I've, I've been dealing with, I don't wanna <laughs> so much. You have no idea. I mean, your dad's the song a day, man. Like how are you going to do that? Uh, <laughs> that's so crazy. It is um, very interesting. Like I've, you know, I, I came from a non-musical family. Like nobody in my family did any kind of music. It was, that's shocking to me. Just, it was not around. It was not, I mean, they listened to music and, I got into music because of records and tapes that they had around, but like not nobody played music or anything. So it's interesting. It'll be, I'm very curious to see that as my kids grow, having music around, is that going to push them towards it or push them away from it? You just never know, I guess. Yeah, I guess not. So, um, you know, one of the things that I wanted to ask you about is I I'm really fascinated. by weird is better thing. You know, Mm -hmm. it's, it's a, it's sort of a, a talk that I've given and all mm-hmm. of this stuff. Um, do you, what do you think about weird? You know, you talked about uh, working on things that are sort of weird to what you do, you know, and, and that's like, um, you know, singing in different ways has sort of strengthened your voice and mm-hmm. stuff. Um well, what do you think about that? Does, you know, do you think you're weird? And if so, in what ways? <laughs> it's funny. I'm looking on my, I'm looking at my computer here because I have a, I literally have a song. Let's see. What number is it? Uh, song number 919. Yeah. Uh, and it's literally called, I'll always choose weird. Are you kidding? This no. is awesome. I'll always choose weird. Um, I, so pr- cool. I, if I could play it, if I could remember it, I would play it for you. But the, oh. the, uh, the lyrics are when I've got the choice most of the time between, between being normal or weird, like I'm, I always choose weird, no matter the cost. I don't want to be normal. Don't want it at all. When we're little, we're given the goal to act abnormal, to put on a show. We wear crazy outfits to the grocery store. And when we're tired, we sit on the floor. When you grow up and everyone says, you got to do it this way. Don't do it that way. 
but I'd rather be weird than listen to them. I'd rather be stretchy than be unable to bend. Ooh. Yay. I'll send it oh to you gosh. afterwards. You can... I love that. Can I share it? Can I share it with people who yeah. are, you know, the listeners? I might link to it, you guys, in the show notes if I get permission and um so that you can check it out. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So I'm a huge, I'm a huge believer in in weird. I think um yeah, I and that's that's always been something that I've been very interested in is uh never wanting to be um, and I think, I think also, I mean, I will say, I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing for, for people who, who don't want to be weird, you know, for people mm -hmm. who feel comfortable, uh, sort of blending in or, or not sticking out in any way who are more comfortable in that zone, you know? Yeah. Um, and that took me a while to sort of realize that, 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 you know, some people, that's just what they want. It's very different than what I want. Um. But I, uh, you know, my, my uncle, when I was a kid, did this, he, he was so empathic with me. He, he very astutely recognized this streak in me, this need and desire to be different and to be weird. Uh, that's so strong. And he told me, he said, I was probably 10 or something. And he said to me, like, if you really want to be different from everybody else, mm -hmm. like you won't do any drugs and mm. you won't, you won't smoke and you won't drink like that will make you different from everyone else. And I took that so to heart at that age. And, and he was so right. It, it like, I was totally, it was like a, it was a weird people just for, you know, all through high school, all through college, people were like, thought I was so weird, you know, for not, <laughs> for not doing that. And he was absolutely right. It was like such a good mind trick that he played on me because mm -hmm. he recognized that. Um, so it's been, it's from that age. It's, it's just always been a part of my identity, I guess, in a, in a weird way. In a weird no way. Yeah. <laughs> no. Yeah. Well, I know that um, we're coming to the end of the hour, but I wanted to ask you one last question. And I actually written it so that it was asking you, who is one weird person that inspires you and why? But really, I think that when you're looking, when you're talking with somebody who has consistently put out uh, creative efforts, creative art, and has been consistent, surely there are people who have inspired you at different points in your life. So uh, who is one weird person? But, you know, if, if you can't think of somebody like that, then who's one person that you would say has really inspired you? Yeah. Yeah. So my main, my main weird, um, like music in influence is, um, someone that some, a lot of people have heard of, but, but not, not everybody. His name is Jonathan Richmond, um, mm -hmm. share a name. And I, I discovered him because my high school English teacher said, Oh, your name is Jonathan and you write songs. You need to know about Jonathan Richmond. And his CD sat on my shelf for months because, my English teacher had given it to me and I thought like, how cool could he be if my, my English teacher, um, but I put his music on and he has had a bigger influence on me maybe than any musician. And he is, he is the definition of weird. He's, he's, I often sort of wonder if, you know, it's hard to know as a musician, as an artist, like if your weirdness is how much of it is, are you putting on and how much of it is real? I don't know. That's how I feel sometimes. Yeah. And and Jonathan Richmond to me is one of these artists who his real his weirdness just feels so authentic. Um and the thing that I learned from him and the thing that was is weird about what he does is just that a song can be about anything. And mm -hmm. that's that's something that he taught me. Um no matter how weird or esoteric or personal to you the subject matter and the example I always give, which is I think the best example is that Jonathan Richmond has this really wonderful song um, called Chewing Gum Rapper. And it's literally just about a little chewing gum wrapper that he saw on the street that he thought was beautiful in, in its own way. Wow. Um, and those kinds of songs that he wrote were profound for me in sort of expanding my ideas about what 
music and songs could be. Um, and, you know, in my whole career as a songwriter, that has just brought me so many different places that I wouldn't have gone, you know, had I, I feel like had I not discovered him at the moment that I did. That's so um, cool. I feel like if this, if this were the John Peel sessions or something, like I would, you know, play a track from yeah, right now, but like, yeah. yeah, but, um, I, I definitely, I'm, I'm going to go seek that out. I'll go search and find yeah, out. Yeah. I'll send you that too. I'll send you the weird song and the chewing gum rapper song. Awesome. Well, I, I cannot believe how much fun this has been and it's just an incredible hour. Uh, and thanks, thanks to all of you who are watching. Yeah. Hope, thanks for watching. Yeah. This has been incredible. It's been good. Yeah. So I hope you've learned something helpful that uh, you'll be able to apply to your lives. Uh, next week, I'm going to have Liz Caruso. You, those of you in the uh, event space know her really well. I uh, know her as Liz King events, but Liz King Caruso is going to be talking about creative ways to engage attendees before and during and after your conferences and events. So I hope you're able to tune in if you're interested at all in that kind of thing. Um, and I have to say, until next time, everyone, keep asking questions to learn every day. As Joseph Campbell once said, the cave you fear to enter holds the treasure you seek. Have a great week, everyone. Bye. Bye, guys. Bye. All right.